Hey Capricorn, welcome to Wild Pearl Tarot. Today we're going to be doing another intuitive, timeless tarot reading for you. Say that five times <laughs> real quick. So you guys, the idea is that whenever this reading finds you, that's when you're meant to see it. That being said, don't give all your power away to online general tarot readings, of course. And if you'd like a personal reading, feel free to reach out. All that information is in the description box below. Uh, if you'd like for me to pray for you, say hi in the comment section. I'd be happy to, even if you want to leave a little emoji. It gives me something that I can focus on that represents you. And I encourage everybody else to join in too. This area is only for positivity and light. Nothing else gets in. Just want to say that. We've got our first Oracle card. We're going to get one more and then we're going to get your message from Tarot. For my Capricorns, all these uh, decks that I'll be using today have already been prayed over. They've already been pre-shuffled. We have a pretty strong message here. Detox your friendships. Your abundance flow is being affected by the people with whom you're spending time. So be discerning about your associations and relationships. Choose to be with the people who are inspiring and generous and supportive to you. And then we have... Hold the highest vision for your life. You now possess the ability to move past any hurdles. It's funny, Sagittarius just got that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, moving past hurdles so far is the theme. Let's just see what Tarot has to tell you. What is going to be useful for my Capricorns at the time of seeing this? Please make it clear, Spirit. What is going to be most useful for my Capricorns? Cards are flying out like crazy for you. So we only take cards that fly out on their own. If you've been to my channel before, you know the spiel. But the idea is flow, right? And we're having a conversation with Tarot. And I want to, you know, take myself out of it as much as possible and just be the interpreter. So that's why we do that. We've got five cards out for you. I'm going to give you the general idea of the, the reading and where we're going with it. And then we'll unpack it, okay? Options, options, options. You, it's like right in the middle of your reading, it's like you start this new journey and then you put down this burden of an old one. The funny thing is the sequence that they naturally came out in. It's almost like you, you, the beginnings of a new journey already start and that is the catalyst for putting down this, this burden. And I don't mean burden in a bad way. For some of you guys, this burden is actually something that comes with a lot of pride or integrity or love. But this chapter has been exhausting, regardless of how you've entered it. Um, and you'll see this depicted by the man holding all those wands. And he's almost at his destination and he's hunched over because he's tired. So you're almost through with this life cycle of yours. And it's almost like if you've been asking yourself, Capricorn, man, I would really like to do such and such and such, but maybe I have to tie up odds and ends, or maybe I have to stop this before I can start that. This is your, um, and of course, assess your own feelings and your intuition with this. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, you have free will, but this is suggesting that actually you don't have to necessarily wait for everything to be perfect or for you to finish up this old chapter for the new one to begin. In fact, perhaps it's already started. This simple act of questioning what's next and assessing your, your own feelings about what you want next, that is the beginning of this new chapter. So they work in tandem. One works to close the other chapter. So it's safe to move forward. You do have these options and be discerning because these options can represent opportunities. For some of you guys, they'll, op they'll represent relationships and people. And all of you guys are going through different things. So it's up to you to determine what these are. But the important thing for me to convey is that each one of these cups, these options hold something. If you look close enough, you'll see that some of them are full of treasure. And if you look close enough, you'll see that some others are full of serpents. <laughs> so yeah, be discerning. Not all that glitters is gold. We do have uh, somebody coming through, a messenger in the deck. And this is representing a message specifically around matters of the heart or a sense of fulfillment. Emotionally, that could be a relationship lovey-dovey situation or creative. We'll dive into that soon. Uh, but first I do want to mention that we do have 10 of pentacles upside down here and, um, and that's going to be an interesting one. I'm going to get some clarity on that right now. Work, work, work. 
So this is suggesting that you have spent some time working very hard on something that you're realizing is not going to pay off in the far distant future. The question is like, could you see this paying off in five years, 10 years, 20 years, whether it's a relationship or it's financial? I think you're coming to a place in your life where you're realizing, I want to be discerning with where I put my time and effort because it really matters. The same amount of time and effort, if I place it in the right direction, could move mountains figuratively compared to all the time and effort I've been putting towards this and it's been barely budging a pea, you know? So let's unpack these a little bit further. The Seven of Cups, be discerning. The Judgment card, let's tell, tell me a little bit more about that. Okay. Then the Fool. Tell me more about the Fool, please. Tell me more about the Ten of Wands, please, for my Capricorns. Wonderful. Wow, wow, wow. Interesting feeling I got from that. The Ten of Wands. Wrapping up on that old chapter, it's like you're doing it the right way. There's something, it almost gives you a gift on the way out. <laughs> How interesting. Maybe that gift is a relationship for some of you guys, but there's a sense of balance and fairness. Um, there's um, this gift of something emotional, a message that comes forward that is really beautiful. Um, there's something very honorable about it. There's something that I think you you leave this chapter feeling like you did the right thing. Who's this? Thank you. Nice. Tell me more. <laughs> I can barely get the words out. Knight of Cups. Wants to say a lot about the Knight of Cups. Who is this Knight of Cups? Okay. That is like a lot. You will be contacted. Messages coming forward quickly. I will uh, need to come back to that. That's epic. All right. So, you know me. I like to have kind of the broader scope in your readings. Just getting out all of, wow, you got Page of Cups on top of Page of Cups. Um, I'm tempted to work backwards in your reading and start over here. You remember when I was saying just a minute ago that you have you have experienced putting a lot of work into something that maybe you couldn't see working out for your benefit and stability wise, like being around for you, um, you know, 10, 12, 20 years from now, and you put a lot of work into it. So um, this is a really very valuable perspective. And what happens at this moment of putting a lot of work to kind of, you want things to be balanced, right? You're working hard for things to be balanced. What is this? The Ten of Pentacles. Oh, it's towards family. It's towards happiness and harmony. And you're tired. Okay, I get it. So, but necessity is the mother of invention. And something happens here that you don't expect. The Page of Cups, you got this twice on top of each other. And right in between them, you got the Nine of Pentacles. You can do this on your own. A sense of accomplishment. Um... There's also, there's an independence. Uh, you bring in the fruits of your labor. You do something here on your own that pulls in something fun, playful, creative. It's flowing. It's the opposite of the Ten of Pentacles. Um, and it's due to seeing how hard you can work at this. And when I said, well, what is this that you're working towards, you know, and it's really about something to do with maybe family, love, supported, what you want to build within your relationships, what you want to build, like, oh, it's starting to rain. I love that. Um, the support around you. So that's what it's talking about. And some of it is literally home, your home. So now... We have in the center of your reading, like I said, closing a chapter on something is, in this case, bringing something forward. Um, and there's almost, I think you're gonna, you're going to let this chapter. It really, you got two endings, and they're very, they're honorable endings. This is like allowing something just to, 
to end naturally because it's time. But there's a sense of fairness and balance accompanied by it. And then there's this beautiful sense of you've done the right thing. And um, it's very interesting, almost a, a fresh love for something, a fresh appreciation, respect, or love for something. We have here with this new journey that is starting, there might be a little anxiety around reprioritizing your efforts, reprioritizing how you make your money, um, how you even, some of you guys might be shifting money for some reason, um, and maybe even shifting investments. And, you know, I want a word on anxiety, the nine of swords. It's important to sit, to note that like, this is that hamster and it's on its wheel. Maybe you're overanalyzing, maybe you've lost a little sleep with this, but Give yourself a pat on the back and go easy on yourself because because change is is not easy. If if it was, more people would change their lives like that, right? People hold on to things that are stagnant and old and sad, not because it feels good, but because they're familiar. People are naturally we're wired to fear change. So give yourself a pat on the back. This is change happening here, and you are allowing it to to happen with grace. Something old is moving out. And it's time for a new chapter to move in. Yeah, like this. That's what it looks like. Try it. Okay, so the Seven of Cups, all these options. <laughs> it's not subtle energy. So you might feel sometimes overwhelmed by the options. You might feel a little tired of considering the options. But regardless, this is a huge life change. This is a wake up call. This is like you getting a chance to rise up and do something in your life. It's like a, a, a do over, like a start over. And um, it's big, it's big. And yeah, you're doing it, doing it the right way. Now we have, I'm moving this out of the way. This is gonna be a longer reading, you guys. If you need to pause it and, and grab yourself a beverage, what have you, but it's going in a good direction, I promise you, because here we have the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups is a messenger, and specifically, the messenger is carrying a message of either love or something creative, something that hits you in the heart space and makes you feel fulfilled. Now, um, this person could be, uh, this, this could be a person. Yep. Could be a message, but I think it's a person. Their job, it's important to, to mention, is to kick you out of any kind of disappointment. Like, let me give you an example. This isn't going to apply to everybody, but it's, it's an example nonetheless. This would be that moment where you, you are out sh grocery shopping or running errands and you don't expect it, but somebody, walks up to you and gives you a fantastic compliment and maybe flirts with you a little bit or something. And you realize, oh, I still got it. And that's all you needed for your day, you know, and it may never go any further, but it's just enough to put a little hop in your step, a little more confidence, and that there snowballs into more good things, okay? But so, Give me a one moment. So this is all where all those cards start flying out. Interesting how they feel. The message I just conveyed feels related, but not the same as the, the cards that then flew out afterwards. The message I just conveyed is attached to the way you evaluate your recent past. Let me give you an example attached to the last example. The way that person, you, f you feel pep in your step and you feel all glimmer glam and great when somebody gives you a compliment unexpectedly, that is contingent on how you've been evaluating yourself and your life up until that point. I hope that exemplifies this. Because what I'm about to tell you is that you're getting these messages, for some of you guys it's travel, but you're getting these messages quick, right? And it sets into cycle an old pattern possibly with a very familiar person, 
for some of you guys, it's a marriage that is almost like stop go like you could have victory here in communication you could have successful communications getting something off the chest but sometimes it's misinterpreted or misunderstood so you're getting another opportunity to do that the way to consider this just an idea is consider this conversation or this person in the best light give them the benefit of a doubt of the doubt because there's definitely the beckoning tarot has for you to consider another perspective. So before anybody jumps to conclusions, before you might say or do what you have done in the past, break the pattern. I encourage you and look at the best case scenario because this is about breaking a pattern. And again, it's all about stuff with a heart. So while these two messages are very important, they're slightly separate. One affects how this messenger, the, the Knight of Cups, affects how you evaluate yourself and what you've been going through. And it gives you perspective to then take to the table for a bigger thing, breaking a pattern in communication with another individual. I hope that this was helpful. I know it was a longer reading. Take good care. Feel free to reach out. Bye. Mwah.